what being on the path of the divine means is that you don't have your own nonsense anymore. Where does your nonsense come from? A bit from your parents, a bit from the society in which you live, rest you cook it up. Yes? Yes or no? A bit from your genetics, a bit from the external impressions. Using these two things you cook up the rest. What comes from external situations is all too much fragmented, bits and pieces. Maybe this information is useful for your survival, it is. What comes from your genes? You know Charles Darwin told you you were a monkey. So if you say, my genetics decide who I am, the monkey business… the monkey business will not end ever. Because even now, your DNA is only 1.23 percent different from that of a chimpanzee. Your evolution is only that much. <laughs> so the more you depend on your genetics, the more of a monkey you become. I say a monkey because if you go by your genetics, you become cyclical. If you travel like this, one moment if you are not alert, you will go off at a tangent. If you go like this, you may slow down, you may hasten, you don't go anywhere. So being on the path of the divine means first thing to become free from your genetics. It is in this context we say, Shiva is Swayambhu, that means he has no parentage. He dropped it. He cleaned his mother and father out of him. No father, no mother, just here. Because genetics means repetition. Repetition means cyclical nature. Cyclical nature means you're going in circles, you're not going anywhere. So, this I business and all you reading bits and pieces of Vedanta, please stop that. <coughs> Don't read all this stuff, me and my consciousness and my witness and where is the witness, witnessing the witness, 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 witness. You can go on endlessly, witness, witness is the witness and witness, 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 witness. This is just a mental game. Ignorant people acting like they know, this is what happens, philosophies will flourish. Philosophies, the more philosophical a society is or the more philosophical a human being is, the more he is clearly declaring to the world that he is a pretender, what he does not know, he acts like he knows. Simple, practical people, they know they don't know and they're proud that they don't know. That's a problem, but at least they know they don't know. So do not get into this trap of intellectualizing the existence. Very confidently you use this word existence, but do you know what is existence? Does anybody know what is existence? Does anybody know? Nobody knows. So when we talk, when you use words of, the, of whose meaning we do not know, that's called rubbish, isn't it? But maybe socially very valuable rubbish because it confuses somebody. If you can confuse a few people, they may believe you're intelligent, <laughs> really. If you want to be perceived as intellectual, 
you just have to confuse a few people. You don't have to bring clarity to anybody. The work, the spirituality or the spiritual work is about bringing clarity, not confusion. Confusion we do only when people have deep conclusions. When people have conclusions in their mind which they believe is everything, then we confuse them a bit so that their conclusions get loosened up. One Shankaran Pillai, when the… at Meghalaya State Lottery, that's still on? Is it still on or gone? No lottery? Okay, at that time. 1984. <laughs> I changed the date, what's the problem? After all, we made up the dates. We can use it the way we want it, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Not now, 1984, he won a lottery and people gathered, press gathered and everybody said, wow, we won a lottery, fifty-six crores. You heard those days, isn't it? So, how did you get this lucky number? So Shankaran Pillai said, I had three consecutive nights I had a dream. In the dream, it said number eight, number eight, number eight, three times. Three times it appeared, eight, eight, eight. Then I thought, three times eight is thirty-two. And I went for the thirty-two ticket and I got it. And people said, well, three times eight is not thirty-two, it is twenty-four. He said, what does it matter? I won the lottery. <laughs> so I'm telling you, existence does not fit into your logic. It's not logically correct. not logically correct, but it's fantastic. That means what's wrong? That means what's wrong? That means your logic is too limited, isn't it? No, existence is not correct. Why is it not fitting into my logic? And this is the argument of a madman, isn't it? This is the way it is. If your logic doesn't fit into it, there's a problem with your head, not with the existence.